Good afternoon, and thought we might take another brief walk around the monastery, perhaps from another side. Not looking so much at blooms today as um, is what it looks like in the early spring, and we're beginning our spring cleanup now. And uh, for the next two weeks, we'll be doing a lot of sawing wood that has fallen during the winter or trees that needed to be cut down because they were damaged by the wind. And right now we're looking toward the east from the monastery, toward Mount Shiam. And you notice perhaps, if you can see it, one mountain that looks quite a lot like a bear's head in the middle. And below where I'm standing, there's a serpentine lake on the monastery. Not very wide, but it's, um, it's fairly long. And uh, sometimes people do a little boating on this lake. The uh, beavers have clogged up a bit of it, and we'll have to clean that up as well this year. The beavers are our biggest nemesis here. And uh, out across the fields, you can see the green starting to come richly, and uh, the hay starting to grow up. So it won't be long before we'll be cutting the hay again. And um, a lot of cleanup always in a, an area like this after a winter time. The mountain across the way on the other side of the Fraser River is mostly provincial park, but a few houses are being built on it. The area I'm going to walk through right now is a little uh, semi-outdoor sitting room. And we have... Uh, what we call philosopher's cafes here sometimes. We'll have a, a few people in and we'll sit around and uh, discuss uh, issues of, um, of the day and theological issues mostly. Uh, we'll uh, also nice reception area for people who need to come and sit and talk. The uh, plant in front of us now is called Heavenly Bamboo. It's um, the Chinese bamboo, one of the very small ones, and very beautiful and evergreen. Across the valley this way, uh, hopefully you can see see the uh, snow-covered peaks, the tallest one, Mont Slessy is um, surrounded by glaciers. Of course, the glaciers are rapidly disappearing. And the other one, uh, Tamahai Mountain, uh, is near where the old monastery was. We were up quite high before we moved down here. This was 20 years ago now. And uh, you can see one, one or two of the glaciers still hanging on. Most of them have by now melted. And uh, the old monastery is fairly isolated. Uh, a lot of the roads have washed out up there from time to time, but um, it's nice to look across sometimes and remember the old days when I was also 30 years younger. Uh, again, the willow trees turning their rich green, and pretty soon they be full-leaved. And Bishop Varlam has been making candles all day. I want to uh, film him making candles before long so that you can see exactly what that process entails. We'll go down now and see what the beavers have done. Yesterday we cleaned out, uh, Christos actually cleaned out the uh, little beaver dam here and I see the water's not flowing through now so they will have stopped it up again. It's one of the most consistent obediences in the monastery is cleaning beaver dams. Usually there are three. The small stream that flows at the south boundary of the monastery, this little lake that throws, flows through. One end is higher than the other, so there's always water flowing, and you see what, what the beavers can do with it. The fence is there to keep them from actually clogging the overflow culvert. Uh, and it makes it somewhat easier to clean because otherwise we'd have to go down into the water and drag things out of the culvert itself. So uh, somehow easier to clean it off the fence. But they, they pack mud on every night and usually in the mornings we clean it off. 
this morning we didn't bother. The crystals will probably do it again tomorrow. <clears throat> The gatehouse, which is in need of repair now, um, instead of a you know, Russian-style gatehouse, and uh, sort of Romanian, Romanian-style gate posts. And uh, this is the main entrance to the monastery. People park out in the parking lot and enter through the gatehouse, which is rather traditional. The um, Forsyth bush here, the Forsythia, stands out against the green pyramid cedars very nicely. Again, the massive willow trees. Uh, those of you who saw the uh, IMAC movie, uh, India Kingdom of the Tigers, would perhaps, if you'd remembered it, recognize parts of this because uh, a fair amount of the, of the movie, India Kingdom of the Tigers, was made here on our monastery grounds. And these willow trees all stand out in that movie from time to time. There are, there are no willows like this in, in the particular part of India that was being represented, but most people wouldn't be aware of that. And here I see the quince bush is starting to flower. Uh, before long it'll be in, in full bloom, and we have to dig it out from, from the uh, blackberries, because the blackberries would take over the world if given a chance. They're sort of like triffids, and um, it's a very beautiful flower. I'll try to get a little closer to them. Especially in the morning, they're covered with bees. This massive bush here blooms every year, and we keep kind of nourishing it. I want to put it on a trellis, a huge trellis, I must say. It's called a beauty bush. It's uh, very antique. Uh, English type bush. Some were brought here from England and they spread and um, you don't see them very much anymore. It's I haven't seen them in any greenhouses for ages. This uh, other tree, a little bit rare for this part of the of the valley. It's an arbutus and they usually won't grow very far from the salt chuck, from, from the salt water. Uh, this one was brought by Father Andrew Somoff and his son and planted here and um, it struggles a little, but it's been growing now for three years. And um, I think in the States they're called madronas. But um, eventually it'll have a fruit on it that's very much like lychee fruit or lychee fruit. Uh, but uh, it's surprising that it survived here this far from the salt, salt air. And the rest of the, the fields getting ready. For the haying season, the first cut of hay will be in May, and then there could be two other cut, two more cuttings of hay. So, and you can see uh, where the neighbors are close to the monastery, um, the closest ones anyway, still some distance away and across the uh, Chilqua Creek. I thought this little tour might be interesting to some. We had good response to the last one, and. Um, It'll give you a little bit better idea of the monastery and what it's like. We'll have some pilgrims here from, from America tomorrow, and uh, we get a fairly steady stream of pilgrims coming from the United States uh, to, to visit the monastery. So uh, we always look forward to having them with us and having them join us in prayer. Uh, one of the ones who's coming tomorrow is a particularly good singer, and he really helps to lead the congregation together with the fathers. So 